Good morning. Here we go again. Last day. Um, today, Al McDonald, the um, project engineer for the uh, Challenger Space Shuttle, will be speaking at uh, noon, and he'll be uh, available for book signing, Truth, Lies, and O-Rings, outside the ballroom at uh, 1.30. Tonight is Hogwarts at my house, and uh, we'll say that that starts at 7. We'll see. We've done this in bad weather before, um, so it's always an adventure. It's a lot of fun, and um, I've talked about that before. I'll say one more time. Uh, you go that way to Wendy's in South Ogden. You head toward the mountains, and every time you have a choice, you take the road that goes higher. And that'll, that'll get you there. Uh, and now we'll talk about sponsors who make this thing run. We're very grateful to the Ogden Clinic, Weber State University, National Kidney Foundation, UMA Financial Services, Allen and Jean Hall Foundation, Elida and Thomas L. Hannum, MD, Chad M. Gonzalez, MD, Circle of Life Women's Center, Country Hills Eye Center, Davis Hospital and Medical Center, Douglas and Shelley Felt Family Foundation, Edith D. Green Foundation, EPIC, Emergency Physicians Integrated Care at Ogden Regional Medical Center, <laughs> Francius, Francius. I can't get it right. Sorry, Francius. Gilbert E. Calouette, MD. Harlow B. Rigby Charitable Trust. Intermountain Medical Group. Weber North Davis. Lawrence T. and Janet T. D. Foundation. In memory of William Riley Brown, MD. McKay D. Hospital. McKay D. Surgical Center. McKay ENT. Michael Schuler, MD. Mountain Medical. National Kidney Foundation of Utah and Idaho, Nebaker Family Foundation, Northern Utah Surgeons, Carabine Mosinger, Hansler Varela, Ogden Clinic, Ogden Regional Medical Center, Ralph E. Frizz, MD, Spencer S. and Hope Fox Eccles Family, Stephen G. and Susan E. Denkers Family Foundation, Steve F. Johnson, MD, Joyce Johnson Stillwell, and Val B. Johnson, MD, in memory of Vernal H. Johnson, MD. St Stewart Education Foundation, Tanner Clinic, UMA Financial Services, UMIA, Utah Emergency Physicians, and McKay D. Emergency Physicians, Utah Hematology Oncology, PC, Utah Imaging, Utah Medical Association Foundation, Val A. Browning Foundation, Virgil J. Parker, MD, Weber County ENT Physicians, Alexander Ramirez, MD, Douglas K. Anderson, MD, Nadim B. Bikazi, MD, and Stuart Barlow, MD, Weber State University, College of Science, Woods, Richards, and Associates, PC, Certified Public Accountants, UMA Financial Services is a great partner to this organization. They're part of the reason it continues. They handle our money. They are a huge donor, huge. They are, we are very grateful to them. Today we are pleased to have a representative, a vice president of their organization speak to us, Patrick J. Brady. He graduated cum laude from the University of Utah with a bachelor's degree in economics and has worked as a financial consultant since 1997. He joined the UMA FS team in 2000, bringing his valuable experience with high net worth clients. He is a member of the Financial Planning Association and holds 
FINRA Series 65 securities, as well as life health licenses. Most recently, Patrick earned the accredited investment fiduciary professional designation from Fiduciary 360, Thunderbird School of Global Management in Phoenix, Arizona. Prior to UMA FS, Patrick was an executive director with Enterprise Mentors International, an economic development organization focusing their work in developing countries throughout Central America, Asia, and Africa. His strong economic and financial background strengthens his commitment to providing objective, unbiased advice to help physicians achieve their financial goals. Patrick and his family love to travel and enjoy the mountains of Utah, Wyoming, and Canada. He is active in his local community, particularly with the Boy Scouts of America and training adult leaders. Patrick, there you go. Oh, and after Patrick's done, then Mark, John Mark, Mark Johnson, the president of the board of this meeting, will moderate after that. Just going to get the mic and wait for the computer to, to show. Mr. Computer Man, John, any chance we could see the video? Thanks. I'm going to just start off with a video about financial services, and then I have some interesting slides related to the economy, healthcare, and a few things. I'm only going to take a few minutes just to give you some interesting data points. I'm not here to lecture on any level. But you might find it interesting what I am able to show if you have any concerns will your money last and how the market behaves. The UMA Financial Services is owned by the Utah Medical Association. And the Utah Medical Association is owned by the member physicians. You think about our clients are those same owners. So our owners demand good investment management. If I were to summarize what we do, I think we help people build a solid financial foundation and organize their resources in such a way to give them the best possible outcome for their objectives. We're really focused on helping physicians and I, I think that goes back to our roots. Our firm started in the early 90s and it was a result of some scandals that took place. So in 1993, the Medical Association decided to start their own company. We're the only medical association in the country that has their own investment company and financial advising company for their physicians. And you have to be a member. But with that benefit, you receive truly objective advice. We're 100% salaried advisors. And we've been that way ever since I started, ever since the firm started. And so it gives us the capacity of advisors to try and really provide that sincere service level. We're still focused on the physician, on their families, trying to help okay. make sure that they're in a good place financially and in their life to, to achieve their goals. Our mission is to create financial security for our clients and their families. Each situation is unique, and so we'll try and build on the knowledge base that they have. And you only find that out by going through a discovery process. We work with physicians from medical school, residency, throughout their career, and through retirement. We build with them financial models and retirement plans, helping to develop their financial resources in such a way that they can be, be in a position they want to be when they retire. We understand what they are experiencing, we understand how to take care of their needs, and that's because we are specialized only with physicians. And we really do care. And with those combination of factors coming together, that allows us to be really a, a nice symbiotic relationship with the client and making sure that we're focused on their needs and thus they trust us. If I were to define what we do, people can label investment management, they can label financial planning, but it's really guiding someone through their financial life from start to finish and making sure those wishes after life or follow through for their heirs and their spouse. All right, 
That was just a little bit of introduction. It's a lot easier to show a video than for me to explain who we are. The Medical Association started the organization in 1993. We are the fourth largest investment advisory firm in the state of Utah. Um, there's about 2,500 investment advisors in the state. So that kind of gives you some context of what it means. What's unique about that and what we're grateful for is our population set is only about five to 6,000 people that, that constitute us being that large. Whereas all the other investment advisory firms in the, in the state can work with literally anyone in the world. And we have five to 6,000. So we have a really nice market share and, and the reason it works well is because the foundational principles of financial services is to serve you and we specialize only in physicians and so that helps. So let me uh, show you some interesting uh, slides here. So let's just talk about the, uh, the negatives and trying to manage the market right now. The slide that's really hard to see unless your eyes are perfect shows since 1980 the volatility of the S&P 500 every year. And so typically when you're looking at your retirement plan or your investments, one of your concerns day over day, week over week is well, what happens, it's now negative 13. How in the world am I gonna get a positive return? So the, the red uh, numbers represent how low the S&P 500 went every single year before it finished, or what the final rate of return was at the top. And you can see, obviously, in 2008, as we all remember, was a miserable experience. But when you go through this volatility on a regular basis the rest of your life, I just want you to remember that this is normal. It's not an abnormal year. It just feels more painful than last because our mind forgets what it felt like last year. We're very conscious of what it feels like today. And so for us, when we say stay invested, this is generally the principle of what we're following. It's a very simple slide to show that. We're in the fourth largest economic expansion since 1900. Now how many of you would feel like we're in the fourth largest since 1900? It feels a little bit dismal, but it really is technically correct. But the reason it feels so difficult is because on the right side, the lower blue line represents the current economic GDP growth of this recovery versus every other recovery we've gone through on expansion. So yes, it is the longest, but it has been a very long, painful process for us. But for those of you who have been waiting on the sidelines for it to get better, you've missed one of the top expansion periods of economic history. And, and it, it's awful to, to, to really understand that when you're looking at your cash getting a negative return because of inflation. This slide, so I'm really just pounding through slides, and I'll be in at, at, our, at our booth later if you want to talk about any of these. I want to draw your attention to the lower right-hand quadrant. The lower right-hand quadrant represents, since 1949, the S&P 500 return under a Democratic or a Republican president. Now, I am not here to give any political opinion by any means. All I'm stating is, on this slide, which this is very recent, and by the way, yes, I am borrowing JP Morgan's fantastic slides for these. Um, you'll notice that a Republican president had a S&P 500 growth of about 6% on average during their time versus around 12% for a Democratic president. That seems very counter to what we hear in the political world today, what it's supposed to be. Now, it doesn't matter where you lean, it's just that Republicans claim to have economic expansion more than Democrats. But the data shows that, a, that an executive branch Democrat has a better chance of having a positive S&P 500. Now, what's not on this slide, unfortunately, and I don't have data for it, is what did, the, what did Congress look like during the executive branch? And that's, we, we know that's critical. We also know in our world that the less Washington is getting done, the better your markets will do, your portfolio. And that is true. Market, the, the, the stock market does not like an active political process. It'd rather have stagnation than expansion from, from the political standpoint. That's a very, just, just kind of a side note. So this is, a, this is an interesting thing. For anyone that's older in the room that's trying to understand how inflation is going to, to play into your spending, under those that are considered 65 or older, you're going to spend 
at an inflationary rate of somewhere close to around uh, 5% on spending, where the average urban under 65 consumer spends only about three. So if you feel like, as you're getting older, that your costs are more expensive, you are experiencing reality of what the world sees, particularly the United States. It is more expensive to be retired, and the main reason is under health care. Health care increases at an inflation rate of 11.3% above the average. So it is very expensive, and once you get to the age of 85, it gets even worse. I'm going to just skip to the slides. I want to show this one. Most of us, as we retire, and I tell this to our clients all the time, you do not need as much money at the age of 85 as you need at 65, though you're going to spend more in certain categories, and some will remain the same. But typically, you're going to spend somewhere around 20% less at the age of 85 than 65. So when you're meeting with your financial consultant or you're online doing projections and they're saying, what do I need in retirement? One of the most critical things that is misplaced in the analysis, unless you're using someone that understands the detail, is that you're going to have constant retirement cost needs. And it is false. It just doesn't happen if you're living somewhere till the age of 92. You will have a glide path down on how you spend, because as you know, we walk a little slower. We don't want to sit on a plane as long. Our bladders wear out. There's just things we don't want to do in relationship to the things we are doing right at retirement. Right at retirement, you're going to spend a little bit more money than you were spending when you were working the year before, because now you have time to enjoy it. So you'll probably see a little peak in spending, and then you'll see a, a slow, gradual downturn into that case. Um, this is withdrawal rates. Uh, I'm going to finish here in the next one minute. The withdrawal rate studies, so those of you that are retired, you understand this well, or you, are, you need to understand it as you approach. The, the studies show that if you withdraw about 4% of your portfolio, you've read this in, in popular financial press, if you withdraw about 4% of your portfolio, typically in a 60 stock, 40 bond, so it's just an average balanced fund or mutual fund or series of, of investments, you should be able to let make your money last till about the age of 90 to 95 without any concerns whatsoever. So that's if you're retiring at 65. If you're retiring at 60, the withdrawal rate needs to be somewhere close to about 3.7%, so slightly lower. If you're retiring at 70, you can withdraw close to about 5% of your assets. So for every million dollars, you can withdraw somewhere between forty dollars and $50,000 on average pre-tax. And remember, tax is taken into account. At that point, Social Security, 85% of your Social Security is susceptible to income tax. It's not taxed at 85%, just that much of your Social Security is, is put into your adjusted gross income. So all this data leads to one, all these negatives, I just want to just give you one perspective. So imagine you're born in 1900, that the Dow Jones Industrial Average is 50 on average. That's what analysts go back and try to, try to back test. It's about 50. And at that time, I tell you there's going to be two major world wars, World War I, World War II. There's going to be um, um, the devastating, uh, I, I want to say plague, it wasn't a plague, uh, in 1910 or 1911 when everyone got sick and we lost so many. Sorry, I'm not a medical person. Um, the uh, epidemic, yep, flu epidemic. You imagine that. You imagine terrorism taking place. Bombs are going to be blowing up airplanes in the air as you get older. You're going to live till 116. You're going to have um, one of the worst economic collapses ever right when you're about to retire. You are going to see, your parents are going to most likely live through one in the 1930s. Some of you might have been alive at that time. And what is the Dow going to be at? Remember, it starts at 50. And at, at 1900, you're a little kid, you're going to think, ah, I don't know, maybe 80? 18,000 is what the Dow is today versus where it was through all those events. So my closing comment is, yes, there are a lot of negatives that we have to deal with in the world, but all of us in this room share a larger expansion that we do want the world to progress, and we're going to do the very best we can despite all of the challenges and headwinds we face. And overall, we have a tendency to win that game. Economically, we win the game. So don't give up on society. Don't put all your money under the mattress. Try to participate at a level that you're comfortable with and get good, solid advice. You're most likely going to make it. 
Bad things will happen, things that we don't even understand. We'll deal with them when they arise. But until that point, stay positive. Thanks.